Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The Department of Communications is seeking to revive momentum in the country's long-delayed broadcasting digital migration plans. Natasha Windall joins me to discuss the latest developments. Hi, Natasha. Hi. What is broadcasting digital migration and what is the status of South Africa's digital migration? Well, basically, the DTT program is an initiative undertaken by government to migrate our analog broadcasting frequencies onto a digital platform. This is in line with the rest of the world. I mean, this is the way the world is moving into a digital era. Um, what this will do for us, though, um, in the broadcasting space, it'll open up more channels. It'll allow more capacity for broadcasters to come in, new entrants, um, better um, television quality as well and it will also stop interference from other countries on our frequencies. The project has been in the making now for over a decade. Um, the only problem is it's been hit with delays ranging from selecting a standard to selecting the set-top boxes, whether there's going to be encryption on them or not. I mean, it's seen multiple court cases go through. It's, it's just been a bit of a mess up until this point. Um, so that resulted us in missing our June 2015 um, deadline by ITU to actually migrate the entire platform to digital. Um, by the time June 15 rolled around, we still weren't ready. Um, we hadn't migrated anything as yet. And that meant that our actual analog frequencies were open to interruption. Um, ITU lifted its protection. Now, so far this has been managed to date, but it's also meant that we've had to try and accelerate this program a lot faster which has been very, very difficult up until this point. Now, in an effort to actually revive the project, the DOC um, has been working to bring all the stakeholders on board. Um, it's trying to jointly drive this initiative forward um, in a more inclusive manner and, and try and, like, you know, remove the risk, remove the roadblocks towards this project. Um, the department then established a PMO as well as an advisory council to try and work on a way forward um, this was yeah, in the past year or two, and that has led the department to actually embark on consultations with um, public sector, private sector, pretty much any, anybody who's involved or is affected by this project um, to outline the best possible way forward to try and accelerate and actually get us onto that digital platform. Cabinet last month approved a revised delivery model for digital migration. What does that entail? Well, basically the old model, as government's actually describing it, it's, it shows um, the government procuring, distributing, installing the deco decoders as well as being responsible for the signals, the, um, all the antennas that needed to be replaced, um, and all the infrastructure that goes with actually um, the migration. It's complex, it's costly, um, there's a lack of capacity to actually deliver on the project, which is also why it's delayed so much. It's overly government-centric, um, and it's been very resource-intensive. So in an effort to actually try and mitigate this more, remove the risk for government, ensure that there are more players involved as opposed to the ones that government ends up selecting through the pro processes, it um, mandated the PMO and the Advisory Council to finalize a new project roadmap to, to bring us forward, um, and that is basically where, where the new revised uh, model came from. This sees government, the new revised model, sees government stepping completely back from distribution, from installation of the decoders or the set-top boxes, uh, transport, warehousing, and all of that. It basically takes a more market um, or retail approach and makes sure it partners with industry more so that it leaves that value chain in the private sector's hands. Um, in an effort to obviously promote more competitiveness as well, um, bring the cost of the decoders down and leave more choice to the consumers as to what decoders they actually want. Um, this collaborative approach is actually seeing the DOC now, you know, speaking to manufacturers, to retailers, to broadcasters um, and try and move, make sure that there's, there's a new way forward where they take more control of it. This means that government then can now focus more on you know, oversight and policy interventions rather so that they can create a more enabling environment. This is, their hope from this is to actually accelerate the pro project even more. Now, the PMO is preparing the revised delivery model and they're hoping to operationalize it, you know, during, well, starting from November or starting from this month through until March next year. And that's when it's actually going to be fully operational. 
But in the meantime, you know, government still got a whole bunch of set-top boxes that they still need to distribute. I mean, USASA had brought along, well, had bought and ordered millions of decoders that they procured early in the stages to actually distribute to the subsidized households. Um, they're still going to do that. The subsidies will remain, um, but they just need to clear now most of the set-top boxes that they've got. Um, once that is all cleared under the old model, then the new model will kick in. What are the next steps in the digital migration process? Well, basically it seems that they are making some progress in the free state. Um, based on the new activities plan and the, the trajectory that the government has set out, South Africa's analog switch off should be completed by July 2020. Well, that's the new date that has been provided. Now, considering the work that they've done in the free state so far, um, you know, with installations being rolled out over there, they expect the Free State will actually be the first province to switch off analog, and that'll be done by the end of December this year. Now, more work is being done in the Northern Cape and the um, and the Northwest Province as well. The Northern Cape is actually susp um, the Northern Cape is expected to be switched off by March 31st next year, and then this will be followed by the Northwest Province. But at that point, obviously, the revised model will kick in. Government will focus solely on actually getting us all onto the digital platform. Then the rest of South Africa will then end up being switched off as well. Thank you. That's the second show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.